My name is Brian LaForme, a uh, member of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Born and raised here. Uh, moved away when I was seven years old to Buffalo, New York. Went to school in Buffalo. Turned 17 years old in September. On October the 8th, I was in Fort Knox, Kentucky doing my basic training in the U.S. Army. I served six years in the American Armed Forces. A few of those years were served overseas uh, during the Cold War. It was a good time, but also kind of a scary time. You know, there were situations where you really didn't know how to handle or what was going to happen or what was the outcome. Uh, I can remember an incident when we were in Checkpoint Charlie in Berlin on the border and we had a, a person coming across from East Germany in an American Army uniform and the only way me and my partner were able to apprehend is he had his army chevrons upside down. Other than that, the uniform was perfect. If we hadn't have noticed the chevrons, he would have got through with no problem. After I served in uh, overseas, I come back to the States and was stationed in Fort Carson, Colorado, where I got orders to about that, don't want to talk too much about that, but uh, that, that's those were my orders and that's what I did. I come back stateside again and uh, again stationed at Fort Carson, Colorado and, and uh, I was in an artillery unit and it was a challenge um, because we were all trained in certain areas and we did our duty, but it seemed a little bit different than most other artillery units. And we didn't find out until about three years ago at a reunion of the 480th Artillery, which is the unit that I was in, that this was a secret unit, and it was a nuclear unit that we, we were all trained in specific areas and we were the only ones trained in that area and that if a nuclear war had broken out we would have been the first ones to go. And so we were kind of shocked over that because no one had said anything during the time we were doing our, our, our training and learning our jobs and learning what we had to do and, and those kinds of things. So it was quite a shock for us when we found out that this was a, a secret unit and that we would have been the first ones on the front line if there was a nuclear war. You know, when when uh, when you think back about the military and the times you served, people don't realize the sacrifices that you make. And the sacrifices are you leave home, you leave your family, you leave your friends, you leave your girlfriend and you ship off and you don't know whether you're going to come back, whether you, what's going to happen. And you write a blank check for the, for the American government. At least we did. And at that time, it was something that most young men my age did. Never thought twice about it. And we just assumed that that was our responsibility as, as, as people living in the United States and, and doing our duty for the right reasons. At least that's what we thought. And I still believe that, that when we did our service, that it was all for the right reasons. I, for one, went in with the idea that um, I was upholding a tradition for my 
my community where my ancestors had fought in every war in North America. And I was upholding, trying to uphold that tradition. The other reasons I, I went was to preserve the culture and heritage of my people. I didn't want to see that lost or destroyed. We've lost enough through the years and we continue to lose. And I just didn't want that to happen for the future generation. Now, when I look at young people that are my age when I went in, they have no idea what it means to leave your home for five or six years make new friends and friends that you have for the rest of your life and not be able to come home when there's birthdays or funerals or weddings you're there to do your duty the other aspect of, of military and this is mainly with, with the first nation people is that they're all volunteers they didn't have to go in they weren't eligible to be drafted and so when you look at the number of our First Nations people that sacrificed the ultimate sacrifice for this country and for the United States they didn't have to do it and when you look at this mound and you see the names on on here from World War One, World War Two, Boer Wars our people didn't have to do it, but they did because they felt that that was the right thing to do. And with that, I'd like to say thank you for the opportunity for me to share my a little bit of the experience that, that uh, I had while I was in the military. There's a lot more that, that I could, could share with you, but it would take too much time and I'm just not willing to, to do that right now. And, and so with that, I'd like to, again, thank you for the opportunity to share my little bit that I shared with you today. Thank you.